Hey there, Evil Dead fans. Welcome to another episode of the After Buzz After Show on After Buzz TV for Ash vs. Evil Dead. Tonight we are talking about episode 209, Home Again. It's the pen ultimate episode before the season two finale. Stay tuned, guys. There's lots to talk about. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Is anybody else feeling particularly nostalgic after tonight's episode? <laughs> totally. Oh, I mean, not it's... just because my dad looks like Steve Barrett. Yeah, I, I mean, for, for a number of reasons, really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> time traveling aside. Yes, uh... <laughs> we called it! We called it! We freaking called it! Oh, I am man. so excited. I went back to the Middle Ages once. <laughs> Amazing. I was really glad they called so that So much out. validation. Well, guys, let's not waste any time getting right into it, because I'm feeling it tonight. Let me introduce my fantastic panel. To my left, Lex Michael. Hi, I'm Lex Michael. All of our social media, at the Lex Michael. And I'm Lucretia Lyon, guys. You can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N, anywhere on the internet, since there is only one. And I'm Emma Fife. I can be found all over the internet at my name, Emma Fife. And I'm Megan Salinas. You guys can tweet at me at the Mangwin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. We are also going to be following along with the hashtag ABTV Evil Dead, as well as keeping an eye on the live chat, guys. If you haven't already done so, please go to iTunes to rate, subscribe, leave a comment. We love hearing from you. And again, all of our previous ones from last season got deleted, so we need that personal validation. And again, it is the best way to let our producers know that you like the show that we're putting on, so it would really mean a lot to us. Also, gosh, this song makes me I'm feel so happy. Really like this song is like still playing by the way it's like we started with the chorus it ended and then it just started again like, i feel like we just underscore the whole episode with this a nice journey band underneath us so if, we if we wouldn't there wasn't a risk of us getting taken down with copyright I'd be all totally right. 100%. mark on the ones and twos has our back guys yeah. we really appreciate it um but yeah, like listening to Journey uh, after the Sopranos finale, yeah. um, mm. it was really funny because I was talking to a friend at work at the time, and he was like, "Oh, Journey's so played out." I was like, "What are you talking about?" Like I was listening to Journey before it became popular again, and our boss at the time, he walked in and he was like, "I was listening to Journey before you both were born," and we oh. were like, "Oh yeah, that's that's true." <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we did, we called it. Yeah. I know. Time they got the rights to at least talk about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. At least mention that Army of Darkness does exist. And show, uh, like, uh, uh, what was it, a three-second clip earlier mm -hmm. in the season? Yes, uh, that's when I started crossing my mm -hmm. fingers is when we saw him in the car. I was like, yes. does this mean we get it? For yeah. sure. Yeah, and that was the footage from Evil Dead 2, but... It's no, it was it was it was from Army of Darkness. The scene where he gets dropped. Yeah, I it thought was. that. Was, I thought that happened at the end of Evil Dead Two. It does. It happened in both. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, because when I saw that footage, I assumed it had to be the Evil Dead Two footage, but it at least meant we were that much closer. If you look at it again, you're mm -hmm. like, okay, no, that's from that's from Army of Darkness, just from the way it's shot, because the film quality for right, both is, right. is very different. Because Army of Darkness came several years after right. the fact, yeah. and even going from the '80s to the '90s, like there's there is a shift in film grade. Yeah. Quality. Sure, very, course. very much so. Absolutely. So, guys, how do we feel about tonight's episode? Again, it is the penultimate one for season two. How are we feeling right now? This yeah. is literally exactly what I wanted. Like, how genius that they come up with this time travel plan. It backfires on them terribly. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. And what they do is explore the events that happened directly before the beginning of the first Evil Dead. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was so cool to go back into that moment in time because we've always sort of wondered how mm -hmm. all this came about. And then, to me, the opening mm -hmm. scene with Ash talking to a duct tape dead <laughs> and just drunk and high, and I mean, he even had angel dust uh, uh, sprinkled on his joint. I'm like, this guy's going through some stuff. Yeah. But time travel. Yeah. Saves everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's incredible that on top of this episode doing what they've been doing so well all season anyway, finding a way to go back and not retread the original text, but mm -hmm. actually deepen it and mm -hmm. make it richer. That's insanely impressive to me. So like hats off. Yeah. yeah. For for me, watching the beginning of this episode, first of all, it's probably the most emotional we've seen Ash since the original films. Oh, because, I know. Um, he was very emotional, obviously, in the first and second film, but ever since Army of Darkness, it's just kind of like, 
stuff happens. Yeah. Right. And you just kind of have to roll with it and uh, because this is the world he lives in now. Mm -hmm. um, but losing Pablo had such an emotional effect on him. Mm -hmm. I don't even think he realized like how much Pablo and Kelly mean to him. And so seeing the Ash that emotional, it really did affect me. And knowing that he would go to such lengths to save somebody, because mm -hmm. for the most part, he's just like, okay, people die. Like, yeah. yep, someone dies, it's best to move on. Yes. Keep looking forward, you know, act so you don't have to think. But yeah. here, yeah, we, we don't see that. This is the first time I think he's ever refused to accept an outcome. Yeah. And, and it's really cool to see him have grown to that point. Yeah, absolutely. I want to um, just give a Twitter shout out to Charles J, who yes! basically like live tweeted his feelings about the whole episode at us using the hashtag. So amazing! It was. Yeah. It was. I was looking through the hashtag just a moment ago. I'm like, oh man, I feel you. Because and yeah. he was looking at it from the East Coast feed. Yes. So yes. he he's been stewing in this for three hours. I know. I know. <laughs> so hopefully we can help you work through some of your feelings uh, throughout the course of this after show. Yeah. Thank you for using that, Charles. It's yes. fantastic. So guys. Time travel. Yes. <laughs> if you could go back at any point and correct one mistake, would you do it or would you be like, nah, guys, I am who I am? I mean, I wouldn't, but I also <laughs> never made a mistake quite as big as Ash Williams. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never made Ash level mistakes either. And, you know, I watch a lot of time travel shows like on the CW, um, Flash, uh, sure, Flash sure. Sure. Yeah, you do so one I know wrong the thing. Yeah. You, can, you can cause somebody to, to become a, a depressed alcoholic. Uh, you know. how, be yes, how beautiful yeah. was that that the very first thing that happens is this man gets handed a bottle? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, oh, I have family history. Uh, yeah. you just drink. You'll be fine. You'll be all right. <laughs> oh, Yikes. man. And I think that in and of itself kind of spells out exactly how this is going to go. Oh, um, yeah. It looks like even though Ruby's talking about there being multiple timelines, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that they were, this was, this is going to go a little bit more Bill and Ted rules where, mm -hmm. you know, time is written and mm -hmm. solid and set in stone, which explains why Ash is in the book in the first place. Yeah, you know. exactly. And I mean, you know, he time traveled in Army of Darkness and that didn't prevent him from still being plagued by dead, deadites in his own timeline. Yeah. So, exactly. you know, so I mean, it, and it's interesting too because you know, obviously, yeah, the the answer you want to go with is obviously I'm going to go back, I'm going to never open the damn book, and everything is going to just be hunky dory. Though I I did have a moment though where I was thinking like, but Ash, then like you you're never going to meet Kelly and Pablo, right? right. No, and you're not going to be who you are. Yeah, Ash, but I hope that if we do have an alternate timeline, they call it Ash Point. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but so that makes me wonder. So now that we've re-canonized Army of Darkness in this storyline, there yes. are, as we know, two different endings to Army of Darkness. One yes. in which he ends up back at the S-Mar, blows away the deadite, yeah. handles the king baby, gets the girl. Right. And the other where he sleeps far too long mm -hmm. and civilization has been destroyed. So yeah. if Army of Darkness is part of this Ash's journey now, where's the other... Well, Ash in the I timeline. think I think Ted mm -hmm. or um, sorry, I was thinking about Ted Raimi because uh -huh. we get Henrietta again. Right. I think Sam Raimi always considered that alternate ending canon in some capacity because even in the S Mart ending, Ash goes, "Yeah, more or less, like that's how it went. Don't mm -hmm. question yeah. me any further on that." Kind of implying for anybody who actually knows a little bit more of the behind mm -hmm. the scenes mm -hmm. that no, he did sleep too long and he had mm -hmm. to find another way back, okay. which right, right. he conceivably yeah. did. So. And, and I like, again, the idea of this multiple timeline aspect being introduced to it as sure. well. Parallel parallel times where there's always a consistent present, like, right. a, little, like a little Bioshock Infinite thrown in there. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, which explains, like, immediately right there, you explain away all of the canonical inconsistencies yes. from yeah. movie to movie. Boom. Absolutely. Why there are three Lindas at the cabin, depending <laughs> on which movie you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> There are three different Lindas, clearly. <laughs> um, four, four, if you count. Uh, Linda one day. Day. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah the, the real Linda. The OG Linda. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, first of all, do we think that Ball is actually gone because... Ash could very well just be hallucinating from the angel dust when he actually has this conversation with Pablo. But do we think that Ball wasn't actually fully destroyed and that he was causing Ash to hallucinate to get him to go back in time to manipulate him? Man, here's the thing is I really hope 
that he is all the way destroyed because otherwise it like makes Pablo's sacrifice not worth it. And even though I'm not 100% convinced that Pablo is going to stay totally dead, like it was a great moment for Pablo where he was the hero. I mean, even Ruby says, you know, when uh, when they're talking about death and, and and Ash basically says to Ruby like, oh, it's so easy for you to be like, oh, death's not a big deal. Like <laughs> Pablo's entire lifespan amounted to like less than a second of your lifespan. And she says, yeah, but in that time he was able to achieve more than I ever could. Sure. Yeah, I really uh, like that revelation with uh, Ruby and her dealing with this herself because she was fully on board with Ash's uh, plan to time travel and even helped. Yeah. But yeah, that's why I'm like, Please let Ball be dead because, yeah, Pablo sacrificed for nothing if he's not. Yeah. yeah. But if Ball isn't gone, we are now in far closer physical proximity to the book itself than we were before. So there's that silver lining, maybe? There, There is another possibility, and this is where things start to get a little messy with time travel, mm. uh, is that Ball in the present day might be gone. Mm. Oh. But yeah. Ball in the uh, past uh, might still, still be, be around. around. 1982 but, Ball is still kicking. Yeah. I was going to say, actually, fairly, there's a fairly good chance that that is the case. And exactly. this is probably where he got his uh, style from. <laughs> Just the <laughs> what year did, uh, what, what year, what year did uh, The Room come out? <laughs> oh, jeez. That was, again, that was he's, 90s. He's, or or he's, that might have even been I early was, 2000s. I think it might yeah. have been. I was going to say, because, yeah, Ball is, oh, like, we talked about this oh, before, but he, he, was, like, he very, looks like Tommy Wiseau. He's Rizzo. like Tommy Wiseau, so, yeah. <laughs> a little. I mean, but, uh, definitely uh, more normal looking than Tommy Wiseau, <laughs> but there's shades of it. But yeah, I guess he maybe he did just really like the '80s hairband like style of things. Yeah, My maybe. dad never gave that up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, this is the era where it is, man. Yeah, <laughs> and that's his big problem. He just can't move past the. Yeah, 80s. Just, the, yeah. the hair is the one thing he could never seem to let go mm-hmm. of for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. he's just a really big Cure fan. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we we travel back in time. Yes. And Im- almost immediately the group gets separated, which I never split up, guys. If you're, no. you're if you're on your way to a cabin in the woods or trying to solve a mystery or traveling through time, just never split up. I no. mean, they didn't exactly mean to split up. You know, they arrive and obviously, you know, we get that that classic like tracking shot with the leaves and it's like, oh no, oh no. Uh-huh. And Ash is like so determined to just like <laughs> take care of it that he basically takes off and and you know, Ruby and Kelly like try to stay with him, but it just it doesn't work out. <laughs> yeah, my favorite comment here in the <laughs> chat is Ringy nine zero nine nine eight says, "Nice to see that the mm-hmm. evil tree Kelly and Ruby fought wasn't rapey like in the movie." Yeah, yeah. There was, I had a it was borderline. It was. I, I also had. I think I shared your same moment <laughs> yeah. of concern. Concerned. Like, concerned. I, <laughs> yeah. I always get concerned when <laughs> um, when trees come to life in anything now because <laughs> because, because of, of the man. first Evil Dead. Yeah, I'm yeah. like. Traumatized by the original Branch Evil Dead. I was not. Uh, I was not a fan of that little aspect <laughs> of the plot. But like, I I prefer what the the way they chose to handle it in Evil Dead Two, and I. I liked what they did with it here. I, yeah. I thought yes. like giving it kind of like a video game style mm-hmm. weak point was cheating a little bit, but at the same time it was like, well, how else are you going to defeat it without yeah. any weapons? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I loved watching Kelly and Ruby continue to function together as a unit. Yeah. It would, uh, unless unless it was a bit that got trimmed though, I think Kelly left her jacket there. Yeah. We didn't see her go back and <laughs> yes, forth. So no. I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that was left on the cutting room floor and the tree doesn't eat it or something because I like that jazz. It's an awesome jacket. It yeah, is a great the, jacket. It looks great on her. It looks great on her. Uh, what I like too, and again, just kind of praising the effects works, both uh, practical and post-production stuff for this show. The tree didn't look like super cheesy or no. fake. I mean, yeah, it's got a big old evil eyeball in yeah. there, but like it looked really convincing. No, it looked, it looked very fantastic. menacing. Yeah, I was I was scared of that tree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't want to encounter that tree in the dark woods somewhere in Michigan. No, <laughs> absolutely not. I don't think I'm ever going to. Michigan. No, I don't think. I, well, I'm. So, yeah, I've never been to the state of Michigan. Uh, if, if Evil Dead has taught me anything, it's that like probably that's for the best, uh, and yeah. I'm just gonna keep it that way. Yeah. 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 I remember yeah. flying into the Detroit airport and being like, oh. Oh, these are like the evil dead woods. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bye. I, I'm a sicko though, because uh, like, mm-hmm. oh, that tree. Mm-hmm. Like, are, are they sure they didn't smoke the angel dust? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that could be it. They could just be sitting there 
in the woods just hallucinating. Mm. <laughs> that could also be it. I, it like, I, I guess at least the tree didn't get up and start walking around. Like I feel mm-hmm. like that's where I personally would have had to draw the line. Like I'm not in this for uh, perpetual tree nightmares. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I would never shake the image of a tree with the big eye and the branches flopping everywhere coming <laughs> after me. It, it would look a little like a tentacle monster at that point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or like could you imagine like evil tree beard like just <laughs> it's like a wooden Cthulhu <laughs> <laughs> that would be fantastic but yeah I loved I loved their dynamic um, and I I love that Ruby again trying to make amends but ultimately kind of mm-hmm. Kelly's obviously still and I think that she's being so much you know stronger in this mm-hmm. than Ash she's clearly hurting from from the loss of Pablo, oh, yeah. but she's yeah. like, you guys, this is a terrible plan. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. this is not well, gonna and, end and well. Well, and Kelly's the only one that's like, I, I mean, Ruby, yes, but but Ruby ultimately doesn't have the same kind of emotional connection to Pablo that Ash or or Kelly does, and Kelly's the only one that's really dealing with the fact that he's dead. Yeah, yeah. She's like, Ash, you you can't just like assume you can go back in time and fix this. Like, yes, we traveled back in time, but this is probably not the greatest choice. Nope. And she's probably also trying not to get her hopes up either. Of course, of course, yeah. There, there's certainly a, a certain level of that. I, I did love the moment uh, where they were in the car and they were about to like travel through time, and Ash is just you know out of it, and uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, and Ruby's trying to explain sort of the whole process, and she has this very like scientific sounding. I was like, I was like totally on board with it. And Ash like sh- like shuts her up basically, and Kelly's like, "No, I would I would like the explanation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please continue yeah. explaining mm-hmm. it so that I don't have to listen to this mm-hmm. drunk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that I don't have to listen to his drunken ramblings. Yeah. And something else too that Ruby points out is like, "Hey, when all of this is over, you can forge your own mm-hmm. path. You don't have to keep following." Yeah, it. spin off. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that begs the question. Like, I don't think everything's gonna get tied up with a nice little ribbon by the end no, of this season. No. Uh, but do we think that ever, that at some point Kelly's going to hit her limit and she's going to be like, you know what? I'm done with this. I'll I'll fight my, you know, I'll I'll forge my own path. I'm not going to follow you anymore. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I feel like a, an interesting thing that that could potentially happen at the end of this season is, no matter how it ends, you could have Kelly decide that she is going to go forge her own path, and so then somewhere in season three. She encounters Ash again, but it's like somewhere further down the road. You know what I mean? And so, like, she's had some time on her own, and she's like, kind of grown into her own person even more, even though she already Kelly like Warrior really is. Woman, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. You you almost couldn't blame her because she's seen <clears throat> and Ash himself has said over <clears throat> and over again. It does seem to be him. Everyone around him is constantly <clears throat> exposed to this. Everyone around him is constantly getting killed. So you wouldn't blame her necessarily for being like, well, then the smartest thing for me to do is get as far away from you as humanly possible yeah, so I yeah. can have a life. Totally. Maybe. But we see how similar she is gradually becoming to Ash. I also wouldn't be shocked if she attempts to do such a thing and discovers, oh no, I can't escape this either. Like it's gonna yeah. follow me. It's yeah, gonna, yeah, it's gonna be like gum that sticks to your shoe. Yeah, yeah, because much like Ash, she's dealt with the loss of pretty well everyone she cares about, Absolutely. other than him. And you know, mm-hmm. the thing is, is they they are so similar. So even if she does branch off, they'll just come right back. You know. Yeah, that sort of thing. But guys, these are the questions that keep me up at night. And you know, <laughs> you know what else keeps you up at night? Hmm? A really terrible mattress. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. Sure. So, absolutely. Guys, if you guys are having mattress troubles, there is a solution. Uh, night after night, two people lay in the same bed, but when it comes time to buy a new mattress, only one gets their way. Until now, introducing Helix Sleep, where you can buy mattresses online, customized for both you. For both of you, for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands, go to helixsleep.com, answer a few simple questions on four key preferences, and the result will be a custom sleep profile used to build you the most comfortable mattress you'll ever sleep on. Your mattress will arrive at your door in about a week, and shipping is completely free. As for couples, Helix customizes each side of the mattress, personalized to suit each of your bodies in the way you both sleep. Helix customers report a 30% improvement in overall sleep quality. You have 100 nights to try it out. If you don't love it, they'll pick it up for free and give you a full refund, no questions asked. That's why everyone from GQ Magazine to Forbes are talking about Helix Sleep. Go to helixsleep.com podcast to get 50% 
percent, or fifty dollars off your order. <laughs> Dang, <laughs> fifty percent distinction. That's so helixsleep.com <laughs> slash podcast. Helixsleep.com slash podcast. So yeah, <clears throat> if you guys are having nightmares about evil tree monsters, the your, this mattress profile will help you. That's sleep. That's a huge yeah. relief to me personally. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you gonna be all right? Uh, now I am, thanks to Helix. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wonder if they profile dogs on the mattress too, because I always sleep. Oh, I know, dogs, I know. You know. Yeah, do they profile yeah. cats? Because I <laughs> yeah. usually have one to two cats sleeping well, on my bed cool. at all times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's always really nice when like, does your dog like sleep at the foot of your bed, or does it just like wherever? No, she always like sleeps like uh, I spoon the cat for some reason. <laughs> that's how we sleep, and the dog's like the big spoon of me. Oh, yeah, that's very cute. <laughs> so I was like, can you profile this guy? <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so we talked about. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to touch on uh, regarding Ruby and Kelly? Oh, mm. you know there is something we haven't talked about. Someone's following them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who could that possibly be? Could it be a future version of Pablo? Could it be Ball? Oh. Could it? Could it? Be? We did see that they were dressed in black. Apparently. Yeah. Mm. As no, far it, as we can tell. As far as, far as we can tell, yeah. from I mean, where the, yeah, the way they're framed. Knee jerk reaction would be to say Ball. It's Ball. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe. Young Linda, although that's a little far from her hometown. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say. I, I feel like it has to be somebody we know. Yeah, I think so, too. Mm-hmm. Maybe this was Pablo going through his cure phase. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody has a phase, guys. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah, any other thoughts on uh, Ruby and Kelly? I just like seeing them team up. And I like that... Uh, Charles on Twitter when he was sort of live tweeting everything his immediate reaction was oh yeah it's gonna be fine because like Kelly and Ruby are absolutely gonna find a way to bring Pablo back I just know it <laughs> yeah. yeah Ash is gonna be doing a bunch of mm-hmm. pratfalls mm-hmm. yeah, in exactly. the cabin proper and meanwhile right. they are gonna save the day yeah <laughs> Yeah, it'll be interesting. Without to, creating an, any time paradoxes, I hope. Hopefully. Um, hopefully. It, it will be interesting to see how Kelly gradually processes this emotionally, because we get moments of her seeming to take the weight of his death on herself. Yes. She actually blames herself, in a sense, for not being able to save him. And mm-hmm. like when we talked to Dana, she alluded to Kelly having to deal with this, this burden uh, of, right. of Pablo's loss. We didn't get more than a couple of moments tonight that address that directly, so I assume that's something we'll be exploring a little bit more in the mm-hmm. finale, but mm-hmm. I'm excited to see where that goes. Absolutely, yeah. And as we know, it's like we, we see deadites play on people's like guilt and, uh, and sensibilities so often that I think that's definitely a thing that, that may occur. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, empathy, too, as yeah. we, we see uh, with Ash's storyline. Absolutely. Um, now, I do want to ask, do you guys feel like it's a little bit too predictable to do we're back mm-hmm. at the cabin two, for the for the finale two seasons in a row. I feel like with the time travel, it, it makes it distinct enough. But I could definitely see a few people being like, we're at the cabin again? See, I, I didn't, that thought didn't even really cross my mind because for me, the time travel thing made it so distinct. Yeah. And also the fact that they are exploring this very specific storyline that we know had to have occurred, but we never saw happen on screen in any of the films. I mean, this... This is literally how the Necronomicon ended up at the cabin. Yes. The story. Yeah. So I, I think because this is so steeped in Evil Dead lore and you have that whole nostalgia factor of, okay, number one, we're telling the story we've never seen before and we are literally supposed to be in the 1980s. Like, I don't I don't think that it's repetitive. That's my opinion. Yeah, I didn't even think about <laughs> that. I, was, I mean, too, because the cabin is so mm. integral to the story. So it makes sense for them to be there, especially when you're traveling back in time to where it all began. Yeah, I'm I'm mm-hmm. with you guys. It, this episode felt like maybe the most evil deady thing that the <laughs> show know. has done. At all. It's yeah. it's yes, it's going back to the cabin. Yes, we've got the book back. Yes, we're mm-hmm. seeing moments recre or it's certainly very directly inspired by moments mm-hmm. from the earlier movies, sure, including sure. Army of Darkness. 
I genuinely got a little emotional when the time portal opened in yeah. front of them. You know what I mean? So all of this stuff is like candy to me. Mm -hmm. It's funny that you say a little emotional. Guys, you didn't okay. you don't watch right. with us and maybe we should set up a little camera yeah. to do reaction videos. Everybody uh, wants Lex it. did a little dance and I'm sitting here like I don't know what I was doing, but I was definitely convulsing in some capacity. We both had our arms in the air, <laughs> we were making very large faces. That and then the the specific when he said he went back to the Middle Ages, we did it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I feel bad for anybody who it has to watch a program while we watch mm. Ash vs. Evil Dead. Yeah, because we're laughing we're and having a good time. Disruptive. Or any of the comic book shows. Uh, the internet wants reaction videos of Lex watching things. So uh, we're going to have to keep, make keep it asking happen. about these. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, it was very emotional. And again, yeah, seeing the time portal was just, yeah. just amazing. It was great. Um, but yeah. To get back to Ashes, like I, I love too that the second we we come into the cabin, you know, the the first bit of the inside that we see is with that iconic shot yeah. with, on the steady cam, and we we do this great, and it doesn't take long for them to immediately do Army of Darkness slash Evil Dead two Pratt Falls and slaps. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Yes, and Bruce is just mm. killing it. Yeah. How how does he still do it? I like I'm watching him, and he's been doing this for what thirty years. Yeah. Is doing Pratt Falls for our entertainment. I look at that. I'm like, that makes my back hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I also, I love, I love the idea that Ash was able to even get up into the rafters that quickly. Yeah. And that was hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was one of a couple of moments that felt like, oh, now that we're acknowledging Army of Darkness, we're gonna start leaning into the tone of mm -hmm. Army of Darkness mm -hmm. a little bit more. Yeah. I love even before the reveal that he's in the rafter. Yeah, yeah. The the force, the the camera, you know, that we the unseen force that follows him <laughs> into the cabin gets into the cabin and he actually tricks it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the thing is like looking around, like where'd he go? Mm -hmm. Not there. All right, I'm going back outside. For, and, <laughs> yeah. For anybody who uh, who finds any of the Evil Dead movies too too frightening, a good way to kind of ease into this series is to give the Steadicam Deadites little voices that uh, mm. asking for directions and getting lost in the woods. So if you guys are too scared to actually get through that movie, that's a good way to sort of <laughs> ease yourself into this That's series. hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, what I was going to say is I love how mm -hmm. Bruce Campbell is one of the few actors that can literally carry a scene like that. And so long. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like he just does these all by himself with the, the little deadites and mm -hmm. this one was good. With like, you know, he no thinks one about to play off of. of. Yeah. 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 No one yeah. to play off of. And he, again, he's been doing this for like 30 years and seeing that scene in the kitchen after he <laughs> ingested the deadite, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, it was like, because it's this show has always been from the comedic side of things, more Army of Darkness than it has the other yes, two. Yes, I films. mean it is certainly embraced the the the, the comedic camp. yeah. campiness of Army of Darkness, and I mean they and this. The scene where he steps on the nail. I mean, as soon as he stepped on the nail, I was like, "This is oh, no, this is going to be some army oh, darkness no. stuff." And sure enough, uh, the the moment where he's pouring hot yep. liquid down yep. his throat, <laughs> yep. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, guys, it's army of darkness. Yeah. This is so wonderful." <laughs> and there was that tiny. He actually did get a tiny something out of himself. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't tiny it ashes. Wasn't tiny. <laughs> it was just a really like a yeah. really rude little malformed <laughs> demon thing. Demon baby thing. <laughs> that little demon thing. Was amazing. <laughs> I loved. I was like with when he like pan. when he started spitting it up. Like you could only sort of see the tail, and it sort of looked like foot shaped. And I was like, oh, oh. is it just a tiny foot? And then it turned out to be like that weird lizard thing. Demon thing. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing he squashed it because we saw his hand last season turn into a fully formed evil yes. him. Yes. yes. So uh, and yeah, you got to watch out for those little evil ashes because yeah. they'll do that too. How do you like your eggs? Scramble. Yeah. I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, we. And I love the idea of him being in this cabin before he actually gets here and setting all the pieces in place. And while we were watching, I was saying, oh, God, wouldn't it be terrible if he actually did kill Annie's parents? Yeah. <laughs> like, I know. And watching this is like, yeah, no, that may be a distinct possibility <laughs> until we meet Henrietta. Yeah. Now, I have to ask. Seeing Henrietta, did she have you fooled for a moment? No, because whenever Ash started slapping her, I was like, she has to be a deadite because they're not going to let Ash slap an old lady who's innocent. <laughs> I actually disagree. Yeah, I, 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 actually, I also disagree. <laughs> I, 
I am usually like totally on board with nope, this is definitely a dead eye. It's yep. definitely a dead eye. It's definitely a dead eye. And because they persisted for so long yes. that she was not, I was like, Oh, come on, Ash. Stop being a dick. <laughs> yeah. No, when he started smacking yeah. her, that was the moment I assumed it had to actually be, be a person. Yeah. Yeah. Because that would be Ash's luck. He yeah. sees mm. someone, assumes they're a dead exactly. eye, and proceeds to start yeah. beating them mm. when they're not actually a dead Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you have to give this show credit because we know ultimately how this particular story ends, and yet it still was able to instill that is she possessed just yet? Yeah, right. I know. Yeah, yeah. you would think at this point it would be like, you would just assume everybody was, but I don't know. It just, it gets you, man. It does. <laughs> and I got got real bad in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. I, I'll admit it. I will freely admit that they, they pulled the wool over my eyes, if not just mm -hmm. for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like because we call the time travel thing, that gives us a, a you know, that gives yeah, us exactly. a pass. Exactly. Yeah. Pass. Um, mm -hmm. Getting to see Professor Nobi. Yeah. I know. The, I, did we get to, like, I feel like we got a quick glimpse of him in mm -hmm. Evil Dead 2. Um, but I feel like it was just in like really quick flashbacks. Um, so like actually getting to see him in the show, given how integral he was mm -hmm. to actually like He's the one that brought the Necronomicon to this cabin. Yeah. You forget sometimes, this is his cabin. Right. This is his yeah. family's cabin. Um, and I wonder how long it was after his and Henrietta's death that Ash and friends actually showed up at this mm -hmm. cabin because I assume that they figured that cabin had been abandoned for some time at that point. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it was interesting, um, sort of the setup of this episode, when when they do go back in time, and it becomes very apparent that this this is not the moment that Ash and his friends are arriving at the cabin. I'm like, no. at, for a second, I was like, uh, they've already been to the cabin. They miscalculated. Yeah. But then to have the reveal that it was Henrietta locked up down in the basement, like, that was amazing. Yes. Yeah. And so, it, but yeah, it is, it is a good question of, like, what is the timeline on that if we're assuming that it is because like the thing that evil dead the musical does is it basically mashes the first two <laughs> evil deads into one story right. the professor's a cardboard cutout oh it's amazing <laughs> so basically the first act is evil dead and the second act is evil dead 2 so basically the the first act ends with ash cutting linda up and there's a, it's like every, there's just like body parts and blood all over the stage. And then Annie comes in and it's Daddy, like, Daddy, I'm home. Exactly. And so then it resolves, it resumes with Evil Dead 2. So by that estimation, this went down, I don't know, like a day before Ash and Friends got there. <laughs> Perhaps and that's hours. Kind of messed up. Like they literally <laughs> just showed up to someone mm -hmm. else's cabin. Like it wasn't, it didn't even look abandoned, guys. Mm -hmm. The ideas were, I guess, were a magical time where you just <clears> felt <throat> like you could. Trespass. I know. Sure. I know. It's not like they're Airbnb in this place. It's <laughs> like beautiful, boundaryless 1980s. Yeah. Oh gosh. How long until air like an Airbnb location becomes the setting for a horror? Movie? Um, I'm just about to write that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a script going. But I really liked this setup. That for a moment kind of setting up Professor Nobi mm -hmm. as a sinister character. Oh my god. Yeah. I thought he was such an asshole because. You know, it's framed, and at this point, again, I believed that Henrietta was just regular old Henrietta, and that it was something awful that he did that turned her into a deadite, and I was like, ah, oh, he's a dick. He locked her up in the basement, he's abusing her, he's just trying to find the opportune moment to make her all deadite-y. Um, but then it turned out that really, like, it, it wasn't that, and the reason that he brought the poor, unsuspecting college girl out there with him wasn't really for... I mean, it was for a terrible reason, but like, yeah, he's I mean, still gonna let's, kill yeah, this let's girl not pretend yeah. yeah. that like yeah. what he wasn't doing was it was it like what he was doing wasn't super shady because it was, but at least you know it comes out of a place of like mm. wanting to save his wife yeah, and sure. correct his mistake at the cost of the life of this young lady. Right, <laughs> he's still may have had sex with Tanya before <laughs> he took the demon out of her. 
whatever. I don't know. He seemed like a shady guy. You know those professors. <laughs> yeah, even though even though you could argue that it is maybe to get his wife back. Yeah, I still still pretty pretty terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or yeah, if you want to go the ultra evil route, it's just like okay, there's a demon in my wife. Let's see if I can manipulate them and get them into vessels that I'm actually choosing. Like let's see how yeah, much yeah. control I have over this. I'm like, when has that ever ended well for anybody? <laughs> yeah. Never. Never. No. Once. Let me let me let me check. Yeah, never. Yeah. Not once. Not once. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I liked that framing. I don't think they're going to go that route. I mm -hmm. think they're going to go with just this is just a hapless professor mm -hmm. just doing his best right? Mm -hmm. under the circumstances. But I really liked the fact that for a good long while they were framing mm -hmm. him as a legit horror movie villain. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Like yeah. um, he could be the scare B and B villain. Uh, <laughs> scare that's an amazingly terrible title. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's the that's mm -hmm. the name of your new screenplay, right? Yeah, yep. Scare B and B. Uh -huh. Scare B and B. We all amazing. get consulting credits on that, right? Sure. Yeah. Woo yeah. <laughs> so, guys. Yes. Guys, guys, guys. Yes, yes, yes. We get the return of Dead Eye Henrietta. I know, I know. Yes. It was amazing. Oh. And I and I had a moment where I was like, oh, it's Henrietta. And I was thinking, I was like, I'm a little sad that it's not Ted Raimi and Drag. Yeah, me too. Like, I, a I little bit. Of that. Uh, <laughs> but then when she went full Dead Eye, yeah. it was Ted Raimi. Like Ted so, yeah. Raimi. I love that she goes through iterations like a like a final dungeon boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she gradually evolves into the Ted Raimi yeah. Henrietta from Evil Dead 2. And that is her, like the ultimate evolution. And that, again, I think we probably started dancing. Yeah, for the third probably. Time, I think. I think probably. A lot of yeah. dancing mm -hmm. in this episode. Yes. And only half of which had to do with the 80s music choices. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we had a huge debate, guys, over what to start tonight's <coughs> song with. Yeah. Uh, there were just so many good choices uh, mm -hmm. for this episode. Um, yeah, it's great to see Ted Raimi back as Henrietta. And I just feel so bad for this poor girl, Tanya, because she's yeah. not there by the time all these other, all the other kids show up and by the time Annie shows up. Uh, and after Bear Trap and after the poor girl from last season didn't make it out of the cab, I really feel like Tanya's gonna. Yeah, I don't think not long for this year. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think yeah. Tanya's gonna make it. <laughs> no. Sorry, Tanya. Not in this timeline. Yeah. Sorry. Or I mean, like, wouldn't it be great if she actually did make mm -hmm. it, and then like we go back to the present? She's like, Oh my God, you saved me. You mm -hmm. look exactly the same. That's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> that would be nice. All right, um, I think that just about wraps it up for this episode. Uh, do you guys have any final thoughts before we move into predictions? I did um. like that Ash was like, oh, I can go see my dad. Like, oh, <laughs> it was so cute because yeah. they'd made up. Um, Ashdead86 in the chat has a, a good question, which is, uh, do you think messing with the timeline uh, fixes the reason why Evil Dead and Army of Darkness have different intros and showing like how Ash got to where he did in each movie. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. we, I think we touched on that a little earlier. This yeah. explains every canonical inconsistency. Yeah, exactly. Every version is just a different timeline. Yeah. Like yeah. it makes so much sense. Yeah, I mean, especially since Ruby explicitly stated like, oh, there are multiple timelines. So like, you know, we were looking at sort of different iterations of of the same series of events. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Just a bunch of different parallel universes. Uh, yeah. Is there a, hopefully a un one universe, one where Ash doesn't have such terrible luck? Uh, I'm sure that with an infinite number of parallel universes, I'm sure there's one where things just turned out hunky dory for him. That's sure. Ash point. Mm -hmm. Ash point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or, uh, so, uh, like, I'm sure that there's also probably a timeline where he turns, mm -hmm. like, like because of the traumatic events that he goes through, he becomes the villain sure. in someone else's story. Like, yeah, that I'd sounds legit. I'd watch that AU for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move on into predictions. Your After Buzz TV predictions. So, uh, we see the preview for next week, and... Ball is there. Yes. Right. Ruby doesn't seem to be back on their side. Um, you know, she's got full blonde hair. Yeah. She doesn't have yeah, the, 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 the pink, pink, the pink hair, anymore. Yeah. Um, and their children are running around again. Right. I think what happens is they quote unquote fix the past and come back to, mm. like, we go back oh, to the future too. Yes. They come back to a ruined future. It is yeah. Ash Point. Yes. <laughs> oh, no! 
I do, okay, but just speaking of Back to the Future, I loved that when they traveled back in time and Ash was like, we got the sports scores for like the next 20 years. It was like, like oh, no. yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Exa- that, that's exactly what Marty McFly wanted to do. <laughs> and Biff Tannen. <laughs> and then Biff ruined everything. Yep. So, yep. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. It's, it's either that they fix the timeline and then everything's gone terribly, or we're looking, again, as we mentioned, it, it could potentially be a past version of, of Ball. Ball. And a past and Ruby. version of, of Ruby, Ruby. Yeah. Yeah. who's still very much like in his thrall mm-hmm. with her 80s haircut. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm thinking, because that's definitely 80s Ruby with that Debbie Harry yeah. haircut. Yeah. But oh my God, it, I love it. It could be the darkest timeline. And then too. we can get another character in this series fighting their evil double. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'd love to see present Ruby take down yeah. past Ruby. Yeah. yeah. She's yes. like, you'll thank me for this. That would be so great. I'm yeah. just, okay, how do, do you guys think we're going to? to save Pablo this season, or do we... We damn well better. I know. We gotta get him on duct tape and out of the trunk. I love how he has a note that says you were dead. Yes, um, all that dead. note was so this, funny. You're not dead. You were dead. <laughs> no, yes, you were mm-hmm. dead. Yes. And with grammatical inconsistency. Nope. Your. Yep. No apostrophe. No apostrophe. <laughs> if, if though there are <laughs> multiple timelines, the problem is, I guess, mm-hmm. it's very hard to control this to a certainty. But could mm-hmm. you just pull an alternate timeline, Pablo, that mm-hmm. already knows you? No. No, Lex, no, oh, because that's not right. the same person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you would also like leave a Pablo-less universe. Universe. Yeah, and the yeah. universe probably and that's actually a crime. needs. They probably need their Pablo yeah, too. Yeah, that's like fringe. We don't want to yeah. do that. Um. Yeah, and, and and this is kind of going back to the idea of them going back to the future, and it's terrible because I I'm I'm now again yeah. with you, Lucretia. I'm leaning more towards we're seeing a past version of Ruby and Ball, but because like if they do go to the future and it's this ruined future where like ball is around because Pablo never killed him. Yeah, like, because Ash then it's never... A sad, yeah. Then it's a sad ending because you gotta yeah. go back to Pablo being dead and like, I just, yeah. And, and granted, maybe that's something that you know, season three, we ultimately have to come to grips with is, mm-hmm. you know, not everybody lives and, you know, ultimately Pablo did die for no. a noble cause, yeah. but I don't like to, I don't yeah, want to accept I know. that. Yeah, 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 and that's, and I don't think that's necessarily in tone with the show, but I don't know, because, you know, again, the, it, it has its, its really heartfelt moments, so. Yeah. I don't think I'm emotionally prepared for Deadite Pablo, and I'm really afraid, oh, I'm really no. afraid they're going to give that to us. As much as, as much as I'm sure, like, Ray would crush it, I think that would do terrible things to my heart. Yeah. I, I don't know, because he's already kind of the Necronomicon. Yeah. Theme. I right. don't know if he would go, like, I don't know if we would see a Deadite version of yeah. him, because he's... Sort of the Necronomicon. I, yeah, I don't know because we've know. already seen him possess to right. that extent. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Charles Ray predicts uh, Tanya's fate is the cabin will eat her and <laughs> throw, throw her out in a pool of blood, like in the last season. Yep, yep, sure. yep. Uh, and then Ashdead eighty six says, "I was going to predict uh, that uh, Ash's love interest from Army of Darkness is going to pop up from the past. She, she needs Ash's help yeah. again. Yeah, Sheila." <laughs> We need the hero of time. Yep. <laughs> and he's like, no, I mean, we broke up. So yes, <laughs> yes. I would love that. I would love that. It would be amazing. Uh, oh, gosh. And like Pablo and Kelly, like trying on suits of armor. And, uh, yeah, yes. it would be amazing. Oh, I want it so much. Okay. Do we have any other final predictions for uh, for the end of season two? <laughs> I know uh, Ringy 90998 says that's what they do with uh, Flash with whales. Uh, that was our suggestion for Pablo. Just have different ones. No. Yeah. No. I, I agree no. with you. I, my first thought, though, is how do we make sure that Ray stays on the show? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Then, then we address all of the, well, this isn't actually the same Pablo business. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, not to quote like a subpar like science fiction movie, mm-hmm. The Butterfly Effect, but you can't, <laughs> you can't go back and like change who people are without destroying who they were yeah. and I, I feel the exact same way about like pulling a, another version of Pablo that's no like because that's a different person right. entirely. Yeah, what, if, is. what if they keep going back to different universes and keep pulling Pablos out and they keep dying yeah. oh. that's like a Rick and Morty thing what they it, do that <laughs> <laughs> or um 
um, like in that movie version <laughs> of uh, H.G. Wells, The Time Machine, where he like kept going back in time to try to save his fiance. Yeah. But, like, she if kept she, dying. But if she never died, he would have never created the time machine. So, so it's a paradox. Um, yeah. Or I think there's an anime called like Re Re or something like that, where yeah, yeah. yeah he he goes back in time to try to save this one girl, mm. and it keeps not working yep. out. I was like, I, I gotta fix this somehow. I don't know how. Riri is an awesome <coughs> name for a show, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm if I'm yeah. citing the correct show, but I hear yeah. it's great. Um, anyway, okay, I think that, that wraps it up for yeah. predictions for yep. tonight. Uh, thank you, everybody who, like I said, who's been in the hashtag. Again, if you haven't already done so, please go to iTunes, rate, subscribe, leave a comment. We love hearing from you guys, and we will give you a shout out on the show. No new comments this week, so again, be sure to do that <coughs> so you can get your shout out and uh, give it a few days in the iTunes store because sometimes it takes a couple days to uh, to refresh in there and for iTunes to get all up to date on that. So yeah, thank you guys so much. Emma, where can people go if they want to follow you? You can find me on Twitter at Emma Fife. I'm also on Instagram at Emma Fife. I have an Emma Fife Facebook page that you can click like on though I'm sorely, sorely neglected. I plan to run me that. <laughs> uh, you can see me on a number of shows here at After Buzz TV. I tweet about all the stuff that I'm doing, so follow me on Twitter and you will know. And since I'm Lucretia Lyon, guys, you can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N anywhere on the internet since there is only one. And I am Lex Michael, all over social media, at the Lex Michael. And I'm Megan. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Manguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. I am also on a bunch of shows here at After Buzz TV and write articles for the Movie Chick. That's Chick with two Ks. Be sure to check those out. I was also on uh, the Popcorn Talks Sci Fi Weekly earlier today, so be sure to go and check that out. That one was a ton of fun. Thank you to everybody in the hashtag, everybody in the live chat. You all are superstars. We love you so much. Thank you, and we will see you all next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Ash Point. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.